Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Half a day. Half a day, sir. How are you today? Hi, Melnick. Pretty good. Zahago. <laughs> Let me remember my seatbelt. <laughs> okay, so... Um, hi everyone, I'm Ken Quintaniza and we're here with Dr. Michael Babakwa uh, for a very special Biba Mesh Chamorro edition of Cruising with KUAM. Uh, first, uh, how, how are you doing today? Oh, Maulika. Zadza Sudili. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here cruising with you. Cool, and um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people know about you, but I guess we'll get straight into it. We'll get to know the man behind the beard as some would say <laughs> and um, I was looking at your background a little bit and um, it shows that you have a lot of you have extensive studies um, in um, I saw in arts and literature um, mm -hmm. Micronesian and ethnic studies mm -hmm. and you also have a PhD degree right mm -hmm. and you're currently an instructor of Chamorro studies at the University oh, yes. of Guam assistant uh, professor of Chamorro language Chamorro studies okay first uh, do I call you uh, uh, professor, um, doctor, senor, Mike, what do you no, go with? I mean, in the tradition, most students call me senor. Some people, you can call me Dr. McGinn if you want to. <laughs> or, or as some people call me Magellan, you can just call me Magellan if <laughs> Magellan. you want to. And um, first, uh, I'm just curious, you know, with all, with all of this background that you have, what ultimately led you to focus your studies on this and ultimately make it a career of yours? Oh, well, it's, it's an, in I have my grandparents. Uh, Tunjat Luhan, who was a master blacksmith, and then my grandmother, uh, Elizabeth uh, Flores Luhan. You know, growing up, I didn't speak any Chamorro. I didn't really um, know much about Chamorro culture, but I always lived with my grandparents. And um, when I was a student at UOG, you know, I was taking Spanish as my second language. And then, like I, and then one of my aunties teased me one day, and she said, Miguel, that's really stupid. You're Chamorro. You should take Chamorro. And then I thought about it for a second. I thought, oh, maybe that's a better idea. I'll take tomorrow instead. And um, it, it changed everything because I, I got really into it. And at first it was just asking my grandparents for help with my homework, sitting down with them and talking to them, listening to Johnny Sablon songs and trying to get them to help me translate it, listening to J.D. Crutch songs. And my grandma would always laugh and say, he always sounds so sad. Why is he so <laughs> sad? But then um, it really helped me connect because then I would hear their stories and then I would take my grandmother uh, to all of the funerals and all the parties and I was like her chauffeur and I would I would even chauffeur her Biha brigade her and her aunts and her sisters and her sister-in-law and I would and then that just really got me connected in a way that I had never felt for much of my life up until that point and so it just made me realize that like I I come from something very exciting here. You know, our heritage as Chamorro people is very exciting and all the people that talk about it, things dying or things being lost, it's important to remember that we can hold on and we can preserve whatever we want. If you if you love the Chamorro language, just use the Chamorro language. If you love parts of our culture, keep them alive, teach them. Do you find it um, difficult to teach your students, teach this young generation, especially in light of, um, I guess in light of, some could say lack of resources or so mm. much outside influence and essentially just being this younger generation that didn't necessi don't necessarily grow up with the Chamorro mm. language as much. Do you find it difficult to try to get your message across? Well, one of the difficulties is just that it's hard to immerse yourself in the Chamorro language nowadays. Because even if you even if you go to a place like Rhoda or something, a lot of people will, you know, still speak English to you, even if they speak Chamorro to each other. And then um, what students find though is that you know, uh, it's hard to really immerse yourself. I've um, even for me, I've done interviews with people in their 80s and 90s, and I'll be speaking Chamorro to them the whole time, but they'll instinctively speak English to me because I'm younger than them, or because I don't look uh, stereotypically Chamorro. Um, and so uh, that's part of the difficulty is that over a couple generations since World War II, our elders have gotten used to speaking English to those younger than them. And so it's hard to learn it from them because they got to kind of overcome their own obstacles to just speaking and using it with, uh, with their children and their grandchildren. And so for me, that's the, because, you know, the, there's nothing about the development of technology or changes in culture that means that the language has to die. 
there's ways that the language can be used to help keep, or the technology can be used to help keep the language alive. But what's what's different and what's wrong in our situation is that the elders just don't speak it to their children in 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 significant enough numbers. And so, if we wanted to save the Chamorro language, we don't need apps, we don't need curriculums, we don't need anything fancy like Rosetta Stones. All we need is that every person who can speak Chamorro makes sure that one person younger than them, or two would be even better, learns the language. Little by little, right? Like, And that, that's all it'll take, and it's cheap. It doesn't cost anything. All it costs is you have to talk to your family members. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. I know. That, I know. Also saw that um, part of your efforts to, I guess, revitalize the language or keep it alive is um, you've helped translate certain works uh, mm. into Chamorro. I know you have a, a comic book, and then I saw you you did some songs. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little about that. And so. Part of it is that um, one reason why, like the Chamorro language is having such a hard time now, is because people who speak Chamorro like feel like the language is really small. Like the language can't say that much. Like um, Sus Chamorro, Sus Tatfris, who started the program on conversation on on the radio on your uh, your uh, what's it called it's like, your company, yeah. yeah, a long time ago. You know. He said, I, we should have like a tomorrow talk, sto talk show. And his producers, a lot of them told him, ah, that's never going to work. You can't have a talk show in tomorrow because tomorrow is just for like making jokes or like, you know, like hitting on somebody at the bar. You know, you, you can't use tomorrow to talk about serious things. But Seuss tomorrow persisted. He went through with it and it was a huge success. And that's kind of the limitations that we deal with nowadays is that... A lot of Chamorro speakers and a lot of potential learners feel like we can't use Chamorro for the things around us in the world today. Like your your average young Chamorro basically associates the Chamorro language with church or with a with an angry elder, you know, with a chant with half naked chant groups and dance groups, but they don't associate it with the things that they're probably passionate about, like memes, cat videos, Game of Thrones. I don't know if people still watch Pretty Little Liars or whatever's <laughs> on Netflix. Orange is the New Black. All of those things that are shifting because we've become so much more invested in popular cultural forms and we don't see tomorrow anything there. Like This is one of the things that tomorrow's really need to work on and we see a lot of creative people working on it nowadays is that we need things that reflect our values, our language, and our culture that you can watch on TV, that you can download from the internet. We got lots of music, but if you think about all the drama on a small island, our lives are, and our culture is perfect for soap operas, but other than the, the show Siha, which you can watch a couple episodes on Netflix, uh, on YouTube, Chamorro's never made soap operas. Like, when you think about it, that would have been perfect. <laughs> I sat next to my grandparents and watched The Young and the Restless for, like, decades. And the whole time, it never occurred to me, Daniel, there should be, like, a Chamorro language soap opera. I could watch this and Tun Jose and Tun Maria and then Hadzigai Padvanesti, you know. Oh, Idingamu, it's your twin. Oh, no. <laughs> Matu Tatisi Stefano, you know. Um, I, think you, I think it's safe to say the Chamorro culture has a lot of drama enough to make yeah. a soap opera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Very entertaining, right? Oh, absolutely. And so that's the that's the thing now. And so for me, what I've tried to do um, is basically take things which are not tomorrow at all in people's minds and then expand the tomorrow language to include them. So like translating certain songs into tomorrow, um, translating uh, manga comics. I did that for a while, translating manga comics into tomorrow. Um, even talking about nerdy, geeky things in Chamorro. Like, um, part of this is necessity because I only speak to my children in Chamorro. So if we're watching 
Rogue One, a Star Wars story, we gotta, I gotta talk to, talk to them about it in, in Chamorro. I can't switch to English. And so Stormtroopers are Sindal and Pakzu. Star Wars is Geren Estredzas. You know, um, whether, and then when we talk about Lord of the Rings, whether we talk about Star Trek, all of those things, we gotta use the Chamorro language. And for me, it, you know, for me, it shows them that the Chamorro language isn't limited to the things which you only feel are super Chamorro but it grows as we nurture it. So if we use it to talk about new things, or if we use it to talk about uh, things that are, are adapting and influencing us, the language will grow with us. If we just say it's only supposed to be used for this tiny little bit right here, pues matayo, it'll, it'll die pretty quickly. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at triplejguam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. Triplejguam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at triplejguam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. Triplejguam.com. Tell me about this. Uh, you have a, a book and a comic, right? And those incorporate the Chamorro language as well? Oh, man. You know, if I wasn't a professor, I would totally be making comic books and and writing stories. Because what, is, are, what so, is it? What is it called? So this is a children's book that I that I wrote, and then my brother, uh, Jack, um, we published it, it's called Sumahi and the Carabao, and it's about my daughter, and sort of her learning about different Carabao legends and Carabao stories from Chamorro history. And so, um, and then this one is Makana, which is like an action comic book. What does Makana mean? And so Makana is, is a term that was used to, uh, by ancient Chamorros to refer to kind of their spiritual religious leaders um, prior to Spanish colonization. And so they were the ones that could talk to the, the ancestral spirits. And, you know, there's some that say that they had magical powers, healing powers. And so in this comic, you see um, ancient warriors fighting with, because Makana, as it's used today, can sometimes mean a sorcerer or a wizard. Okay. And so we see... Um, this is a battle between two sorcerers, one of whom uses giant animals to fight with and another uses elemental powers. Oh, you definitely are incorporating it into uh, fun things that people, I guess, who normally wouldn't um, be exposed to the Chamorro language to enjoy it in some sense, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you were speaking about your kids. You have two? Mm -hmm. And um, what are their names again? There's uh, Sumahi, Ihagahu, and Akli'i, Ilahihu. And, um, what are those names again? Sumahi is, it means when the moon is waxing. So it's, uh, I first heard that um, when I was trying to learn tomorrow and I asked my grandmother and I was having my grandmother translate. She, oh my, I felt so bad for my grandmother. She was going deaf and I was barely, com I could barely understand the Chamorro language. And so we would both put our ears next to this old like CD player trying to listen to Johnny Sablon songs. And so in the song Dalai Neni, there's a line, Ipilan Zengin Sumahi, Wahatristi Sumahi And so when um, it means, you know, the, when the moon waxes, there is sadness and it's waxing. And so my grandma, that always, my grandma always liked that line. And so when I had my first child, I decided, we decided to name her Sumahi after that. Akli'i means to be like, to have good vision, to have good eyes. Um, and that's my boy who, who ironically wears glasses, even though he's quite young. He doesn't, I always tease him. <laughs> but said, how Akli'i, you're blind, Akli'i. And you're, you know, you're speaking about keeping the language alive and from the minute you knew you were having kids, was it, was it always a goal, I'm gonna teach them tomorrow? I mean, some people don't even, you said you, were, you didn't grow up speaking it fluently, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it's easier, I'm assuming, when you're young, right, to learn the Oh, language. absolutely. It, was it always uh, your intention, I'm going to make them speak tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As soon as I knew, it was like, this is going to be one of the things I'm going to do. You find if it... you know, it's... Now, for me, it's not hard. It's Because the thing is, if, if you're trying to speak to, learn to speak tomorrow, your uncles and your aunts <laughs> can be very judgmental and critical. You know, they'll... <laughs> 
Um, but the thing is, when you if you have children, it's a great chance to really push yourself in the language because you can learn alongside your children in a way. And the biggest challenge that we face with the language right now is really just discomfort, nervousness. Some people call it the malo factor. Like you don't want to look stupid in front of your relatives. You don't want them to tease you because many, you know, many people who try to learn Shamor have the experience where somebody comes and says, ooh, what is that? How old are your kids? Uh, my daughter is nine and my son is sev seven. I seven. Bet, I bet you they speak better tomorrow than a lot of people. Do you think they, they speak better than you in some sense? Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> the this is part of the problem is that my, you know, my daughter speaks tomorrow and she understands tomorrow, but none of her cousins speak tomorrow. Yeah. And none of the kids at school speak Chamorro. And so it's a very it's very isolating for them. And this is one reason why I take this very seriously, is that I want to help other people speak the language so that they can teach their kids so that my children don't feel weird that they can speak. Because my daughter is my daughter is is almost, you know, she's nine going on eighteen, it seems like sometimes. And so she feels very weird about being able to speak Chamorro. So if you come up to her and you try to speak to her in tomorrow, she'll like shut down sometimes because it's just really, it's the politics of it are very strange for her because this is a language that I speak with them, but then they just don't hear it in okay. any other places. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trading plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. A lot of people know you about uh, your efforts with um, the decolonization efforts. Um, uh, you know, you're part of the Independence for Guam Task Force. And um, do you feel that for people who fight for these Chamorro rights or, you know, try to um, be all Guam, as some people would say, you know, mm -hmm. do you feel that there's like a misconception or like a, a view that you guys, like a, a bad view people you guys get from people just in terms of defending the culture, the mm -hmm. language, the people? You feel sometimes. That? I mean, I think, um, yeah, sometimes I'll get that. I mean, sometimes people will call me like a, like a communist, like a racist, um, a nativist. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know. A lot of random things. Um, How do you take that? Like, just because, you know, you, considering you live on Guam and, you know, that's that's what basically Guam is about and you feel that, you know, as, as more people get older, more cultures get immersed into Guam that there's, it's, it's not just Chamorro anymore, you know? Mm. Oh, that's true. And I think in terms of decolonization, uh, the effort should be multicultural. I mean, I don't, I don't believe that everyone should necessarily vote on a plebiscite, but everyone should be involved in the education and the discussion um, and that's that's my personal belief is that um, if you are from the United States and you live on Guam your country has a history of its own independence its own sort of decolonization it has a history of sometimes supporting the freedom of others sometimes not necessarily supporting the freedom of others and your role here shouldn't be to destroy or like squash the movements for decolonization here you should look and basically say you know what our founding fathers did this hundreds of years ago it was rough it was difficult um, we want to support you now just like people from the Philippines people from the Philippines when went fought for their independence and they they achieved it um, and it's been a difficult road at times but they are you know a, a large nation right now independent country and they can look at the Chamorro struggle and basically say, you know, Guam, the Marianas Islands and the Philippines, we share a long history. You know, we want to support you. We've been through this before. We have our own experiences. We want you to learn from those experiences and we want to assist you in, in taking this big step. And so that's why the education is so important because oftentimes this is a conversation which is only amongst certain Chamorros, right? But it shouldn't be. 
others can definitely join and listen in and contribute and it's better that way because if if for example a bunch of you know decolonization activists get together and talk about this themselves but don't share it with anyone else then it's easy to feel like others are being excluded but if you kind of just lay it out there and then you articulate why is it that somebody from Palau, the Philippines, from the U.S., from China, from Japan should also support the struggle of the Chamorro people to achieve self-determination? I think most of them would agree and they would support it. Some, some might not, but I think the majority of them would basically say, you know, this is a great island. Chamorros are a great people. You know, uh, we don't want to get in your way. We want to help you. I would hope I would hope that. Do you, you know, you're so passionate about this and you're so, you I guess some would say you devoted your life to it, right? Um, for the rest of your life. Um, is there anyone you look up, I mean, you mentioned your grandparents, but is there anyone you look up to who kind of laid the groundwork for where you are today? I mean, a lot of people cite Angel Sanchez and all these other people, but is there anyone you look up to that has influenced um, how you perpetuate and uh, promote the culture mm -hmm. and the language? And so, I mean, I definitely look up to, uh, and I don't say this because he's my boss at UOG, Robert Underwood. Because um, I've read, I've, I've tried to read just about everything he's written. And he was, you know, he's somebody who, he was making arguments 30 years ago, which then allow me to kind of make the arguments I make today. And then even looking before him, you know, the late Tony Palomo, who the museum will be named after. I used to spend time with him at the, you know, when the Guam Museum was homeless, sitting down and talking to him. And he inspired me in so many ways too, just like instilling in me like a love of hearing stories, connecting historical dots. And so those are two people, sort of off the top of my head, who really inspired me, who, in, who continue to inspire me. I mean, both of them, I think, were, were making arguments, along with others, which other people may not have accepted initially, uh, but then eventually through education and through discussion, they did. I mean, Tony Palomo was one of the prior to any cultural renaissance movement, he was somebody who was advocating that we should take away the, the, Span the Spanish or colonial names for streets and use the ancient numbers and the ancient months for them. He was saying that when we represent ourselves to tourists, we should, we should promote what is really us, our colonial history, our ancient history. Now he was saying that when everyone else was saying, we should just pretend we're Waikiki or we should just pretend we're Las Vegas because we're worthless. We don't have anything of value. People will only come here if they think they're going to someplace else. But Tony Palomo in the 60s was arguing that. And you know, that's so to me, I find both of them, they're intelligent tomorrow men who strongly believed in sort of our people telling our stories. And, and so I, I definitely look up to them. And you know, with those people you look up to, I'm assuming a lot of people look up to you as well. Would you ever, just throwing it out, would you ever consider running for public office? No, 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 no. Definitely not. I think I would, I would, uh, I would suck at it. <laughs> and definitely not how I would want to spend my time. <laughs> you feel that, um, like lawmakers, they need a, I mean, I, at least we, I, I notice a lot of it, but we have a lot of new senators now in this new legislature. Do you feel that they need to incorporate more, um, legislation or bills regarding the Chamorro language, Chamorro culture? I mean, I know they passed that, that, uh, bill to make, um, the holiday. Mm. Um, they even changed the name. It's no longer Discovery Day. Um, do you feel that there should be more um, I, efforts like that? Oh, I, I absolutely think so. I mean, because in it's 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 really easy to kind of just think of Guam as where America's Day begins, but that's not really what makes us unique or interesting or special in the world. Sort of the the Chamorro presence here is really what makes us unique and special. And so the more that we can do to not just promote that, but also preserve and protect that. Sort of the better the island will be. I think it's a perfect way to end this cruising. Thank you so much again, um, Maget, Magellan. <laughs> <laughs> I love those names, but thank you so much again for uh, joining us for this cruising with KUAM. Um, if people want more information or uh, on how to take your class, how to just speak with you or just get insight from you, uh, where can they reach you? You can follow me on Facebook or if you're interested in, in books or comics that me and my brothers make, you can go to theguambus.com. Perfect. Thank you so much again. Really appreciate it. Bye, guys. Viva. Mesh tomorrow. Viva.
Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com.